Good morning and welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 20th of September and this quick look at the week ahead beginning the 23rd of September. It's been a bit of a strange week for equity markets in general. We had a little bit of a weak start on the back of the spike higher in crude oil prices um, on concerns that the drone strike in Saudi Arabia might precipitate a much bigger conflagration which could in essence drive fuel prices up through $80 a barrel and derail the global economy. Um, Certainly the outlook for the global economy hasn't improved despite some evidence of a little bit of an improvement in the economic data. This week the OECD downgraded its global growth forecast from 3.2% to 2.9% at a time when central banks have been largely constrained a little bit in their easing by the fact that they're probably operating at the limits of their capabilities. Federal Reserve cut rates by 25 basis points earlier this week. Swiss National Bank, Bank of Japan, Bank of England all kept rates unchanged. And we we only have the RBNZ this coming week to look forward to with respect to um, that central bank rate decision in the coming few days. So what to make out? from the coming week. Well certainly if we look at equity markets after three weeks of decent gains this week we've sort of traded a little bit sideways with a slightly positive bias as we head into the weekend. We can see that here in the FTSE 100 chart where we've still got fairly decent resistance around about 7,380. Certainly in terms of safe havens we haven't really seen any significant strength in gold or the Japanese yen or um, to a lesser extent in the Chinese one. So that would appear to suggest that investors are still prepared to buy stocks, albeit slightly more cautiously now, but they're certainly not minded to sell them off aggressively after some decent after some decent gains from the August lows. It's a similar sort of story on the Germany 30 or the DAX. We've traded a little bit sideways on the daily charts. Yes, we do look a little bit overbought in the short to medium term. But if we actually zoom this out and look at the long shadows on the lower candles, we can see that there is some significant decent demand down near 12,300, even though we haven't really traded in much more than a 200 point range on the German DAX. So keep an eye out on the highs that we saw Last Friday on the 13th of September, that was around about 12,500, 12,495, and obviously the lows at 12,300 um, for a break either side of that range in the DAC. Similar sort of story on the S&P 500. We haven't as yet taken out the highs that we saw in July, but again, it's a similar sort of story when it comes to the long shadows either side of the bodies of these particular candles. So there is certainly decent demand to buy um, equities in and around 2980 on the S&P. But I think investors are a little bit cautious about driving it up significantly through the 3020 level. Um, Also keep an eye on Brent crude prices after the oil price spike that we've seen this week. We've given a, a good proportion of it back but we haven't given all of it back so I'll be paying particular attention um, to this gap that we've seen between where we closed last Friday on Brent crude or around about $60 a barrel um, and where we are now around about 64 so from being potentially um, tw- 10 to $12 higher at the beginning of the week we're now only $4 higher so that for me doesn't suggest that we're at risk of an oil shock. Obviously, there's an awful lot of saber rattling going on with respect to Iran, saying that they're if they're if atta- that they'll be, they'll be the mother of all wars if they're attacked. But I think the fact that the Saudis have actually pushed the matter up to the United Nations suggests that both sides will probably um, keep their guns holstered for the time being and hopefully oil prices will slip back down. Certainly they're not exerting any meaningful inflationary pressure on the global economy if recent inflation um, numbers have been any guide. So looking ahead to the upcoming week, um, it's been a 
it's likely to be probably not as busy as it was this week. Obviously, Brexit, once again, is probably going to be dominate the headlines. We've certainly seen the pound continue to push higher. And actually, from a technical point of view, despite all of the negative political um, discussions that are going on, the pound continues to break higher. And for me, I think that is the important thing. This break of 123.80 here is very, very significant in terms of the overall trend that we've seen in the pound um, since those highs of 133.80 all the way back in March. We've retraced around about 38.2% of that, and that came in at 125. We obviously broke above this 123.80 level, which corresponded to these lows here in July and these peaks here earlier this month. The fact that we've broken higher should be seen or construed as largely positive and while we're above 123.80 I can still see potential for the pound to head back to the 200 day moving average around about 127.30, 127.40. Um, one f the next target is obviously the 50% retracement which is around about 126.70. Now how we get there is anybody's guess but certainly in terms of euro sterling um, there has been a significant development there in terms of breaking below the 200 day moving average. If we look at the weekly chart, we can also see um, that we're in line for our fifth successive, sixth successive weekly rise in the value of the pound. So we could potentially get a little bit of a pullback. Certainly if we look at the Fibonacci retracements of this entire up move from the lows back in March to the highs that we saw in August, we have retraced 61.8% of that move at around about 87.95 so we could get a little bit of a rebound we have traded slightly below that in the wake of those comments from Jean-Claude Juncker um, about the prospects that the EU the European Commission um, is very, very perfectly prepared to get rid of the backstop if there are viable alternatives the fact that the Commission is being much more conciliatory and Downing Street appears much more optimistic is obviously a positive sign but as with all of these Brexit headlines it's very important that you look through the hyperbole and for me I'm paying more attention to the actual price action and the price action suggests to me the pound for the momentum for the pound has started to shift more towards the upside than to the downside. So certainly keeping an eye on how we perform around about this 87.90 area in Euro Sterling and obviously the 123.80 area on the downside um, in the cable. So um, in terms of economic data, it's a fairly important week for economic data out of Germany. We've got German and French flash PMIs for September and we have started to see some improvement on the margins in some of the more recent PMI data. Um, last week we saw ZEW out of Germany improve slightly from minus 44 to minus 22 which I suppose is a small victory when you consider that minus 44 was the lowest level since December 2011 so we're probably going to get an improvement anyway it could hardly be much worse. Um, and I think an awful lot of that was down to the fact that we saw a decent rebound. We have seen a decent rebound in the DAX and President Trump has slightly cooled his um, aggressive trade rhetoric towards China in the past couple of weeks. So I think that has also helped in terms of burnishing risk appetite if you like. So we've got the flash PMIs out of Germany. Um, there has been significant divergence between manufacturing and services. That hopefully won't change. Services has continued to outperform. The ECB is likely to remain accommodative even though um, we had what I would call a failed TLTRO auction when only 3.4 billion euros was asked for by European banks um, instead of the 20 to 100 billion euros that was initially estimated. We've also got the German IFO business climate survey for the, on the 24th of September and we could see a little bit of a rebound in that but that's again probably likely to be a small victory. Economic activity is already at its lowest levels in the IFO since 2012 um, because of the triple headwinds of the uh, US-China trade, uh, the uncertainty around its auto industry as well as the prospect of a bad Brexit weighing on the manufacturing sector uh, in Germany. Um, 
we've also got a couple of numbers out of the US, US Consumer Confidence. Uh, that's, and I'm, I'm usually skeptical about US Consumer Confidence, if I'm honest, simply because it, it's not particularly tangible. But nonetheless, I think there was an expectation that at the beginning of August when President Trump really ramped up the rhetoric against China and imposed those further tariffs on $300 billion of Chinese goods, US consumer confidence would take a hit. That didn't happen. Um, it only dropped ever so slightly to around about 135. So as we come to the end of Q3, I think investors will be looking for signs that US consumers are starting to lose confidence in the resilience of the US economy. Thus far, we haven't seen much evidence of that. Jobless claims still just above 200,000. Wage growth, the recent non-farm payrolls at 3.2%. And even though the headline number on the payrolls report was a little bit on the weak side, the unemployment rate still remains clear to, close to multi-year lows. And retail sales still are still fairly resilient. So I think a sharp decline in September consumer confidence could be an early sign that investment is um, or the sentiment is starting to shift so that again is on the 24th of September but certainly in the context of what we're seeing in terms of the dollar I think the likelihood is that as long as US economic data continues to hold up fairly well then the dollar should continue to strengthen and if we look at euro dollar chart here we can see that there's a nice little trend line that I've drawn through the highs in June that currently comes in round about 11080 there's also the 50 day moving average just above that so for me while we're below this trend line of 50 day moving average the trend is your friend I can certainly foresee a retest of the lows that we saw in August We've also got the final reading of US second quarter GDP. And this final reading, I think, is likely to be uneventful. It's expected to come in around about 2.1%. Personal consumption still likely to remain fairly strong. Um, it's not really going to tell us anything that we don't already know. In terms of the earnings picture, I think it's going to be a decent... We, we could get some volatility from Thomas Cook and Boohoo.com. Um, I think very much a case of a tale of two retailers if you like or travel and leisure or what have you now there's been an awful lot of news recently with respect to Thomas Cook there's a good chance that the company could go into administration after the bankers asked for another 200 million pounds on top of the 900 million pounds um, that um, was agreed with Foson the Chinese travel operator which is part of the company's restructuring it's the company's Q4 numbers. I think there's significant concern that the company may not see the end of the year unless some form of restructuring deal is agreed. And their Q4 numbers this week um, could well be the final nail that's hammered into the coffin of Thomas Cook. So I'll be keeping an eye on that. I will also be keeping an eye on Boohoo.com, which is one of those retailers that has actually been outperforming expectations and there has been a few of them there's been JD Sports there's been um, there's also there's also been Next is who, which is also doing quite well and companies like Dunelm so it's not all bad news on the retail front so keeping an eye for Boohoo Group's first half numbers um, uh, and on, on the back of the recent upgrade that management gave to uh, their full year guidance um, earlier this month um, as for the rest of the key events this week, you can find them on the news and analysis section of the website. Um, otherwise, that's it for me for this week. Once again, thank you very much for listening. It's Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.